Hello and welcome to Bursting the Davos Bubble. This is episode four and episode four is really important. We're going to look at slides nine and ten of this series, which are going to tell us a lot about inclusive growth and something else, how to manipulate people. So these uh, slides were on the Flickr account for the World Economic Forum, sent to me by Darren Kenton. He's a great guy. He's uh, sent me a couple of things like this before. And, you know, whether whether I'm interested in them, I don't know. But this one, definitely interested in. And so we're going to go through them quite quickly. These take a long time. Uh, I've got some notes on the side, so I am going to be looking off to the side. But I will be sharing my screen with you so you can see the wonders that lay behind the World Economic Forum's training session. Look, here we go. This is the first slide of two. So we've got inclusive growth here. And we got the power of persuasion. Yes, we do. You can look forward to that. That one's a, a doozy. Save the best to last, maybe. Well, that was the last one on there, so that's the way it's going to be. Uh, the inclusive growth agenda, thinking beyond the GDP. And let's have a little look at these images that come underneath. you got what looks like a ballot card, so we... We're going to have to rethink GDP, so we'll have to rethink voting. And what about this white guy who's telling this black guy he can speak? Yes, you can speak. Tell us what you think, says the white man to the black man. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of virtue around there, but that look, does look like someone is giving permission for someone else to speak. And here you've got the uh, what looks like a dollar bill ripped in half. I don't know, money, tearing money down the middle because it's going to be worth nothing anymore. And you've got uh, a, a satellite dish up top here. You've got the atomic symbol, which atomic Schwab, whose father, uh, Eugen Schwab, uh, himself uh, helped the Nazis in trying to gain um, atomic weaponry, building casing for atomic weaponry at his uh, Escher Weiss facility, where he was managing director in Ravensburg in Germany, um, as well as them enriching, creating large turbines that would be used in the enrichment of uranium which is a naturally uh, using heavy water is a natural way of enriching uranium and that was a way to get towards uh the nazis winning the war by having the bomb of course but nope didn't happen did it no that's not the way it worked out and they ended up being the bad guys in that war if the other side had won the other side would have been the bad guys that's how it works now down there is a gavel banging down so like new judgment new laws are going to be created obviously in this inclusive growth agenda which is what this slide's about happily stated above you know you got your maggie coming from your mega city the wing the hand of inclusive growth giving giving the inclusive growth agenda to the world and science as well and this is a really interesting slide but we're gonna try and get through it a bit because the next one is really interesting so we got tensions between GDP and well-being. Um, so that's already interesting. That that's what they see the future as being. Look, there's going to be tension between the gross domestic product of a country and the well-being. The country won't be able to make as much, and the well-being will fall below standard because it's all about money and all about profit and all about all of that stuff still. So not really changing uh, for positive, but changing into a different sort of monster capitalism, which is, of course, the dominant form of cultural expression in the world at the moment. Um, and if it wasn't, that, it'd be some sort of crushing communism or some sort of uh, ferocious fascism. Uh, don't get me wrong, just because I say one doesn't mean I support the others. All of them are crushing and they all come to the they all come to the same conclusion as well. Capitalism, all all of the money rides to the top. Pareto distribution, all money goes up. Shoop, sits at the top. Everybody else has roughly got the same amount of nothing. Communism, oh, uh, the elites seem to rule everything, and everybody's supposed to be doing it together, but everybody's got nothing. Fascism, well, the ones who are powerful and have got the most weapons and control of the soldiers, they got everything. All the soldiers and stuff. Well, they haven't got much, have they? And it, it's all the same style. It's just three different styles. It depends on wh how much they shout at you, how much they get you to shout at each other, and how much they convince you not to listen to each other. That's the only difference between the ideologies. 
So the tensions between GDP and well-being. Now, straight away, you've got to look at what the, the they say about this. More efficient with resources. Read between the lines. More efficient with resources is we've got to be careful. We can't we can't give everybody access to everything nowadays. Um, but we need to create electric homes, electric cars, electric everywhere, and live in smart cities. Why? Well, we'll have to mine everything outside to be able to get together all of the zinc and whatever else that we need to create all of this electric dream come true. So the rest of the world will be roughly a wasteland once we've done that. So why would we want to live there? But we that means we've got to be really efficient because we don't want these electric things to break. And it's like a creation, a constant creation of man toys, I suppose. Uh, relationships between rural and urban now you know that's really that's really important they're defining something there and you're going oh that means yes of course people in the country have a different life to the people in the cities but that's going to increase 20 30 fold once it's mega cities that are organized and people are herded in there from the countryside and the communication then between the countryside and the city is like well the city comes along and takes our people and takes them to the city it's just like like almost um Khanian. i mean like by kangas khan like you know it's all, it's almost uh, uh like some sort of well it's dystopian they come they take your people they whip you off your farm so you don't own that anymore and they stick you into the mega city and in, they go out and they find some more um kind of like the beginning of apocalypto that movie with uh i think it's mayans <gasps> I hope it's not Aztecs. They hate being mixed up. Okay, participating in growth in different ways. Yeah, so different parts of the, the population participating in growth in different ways. That's nice, isn't it? But this is a, a lot of what this sounds like um, most of the time. So we're going to go through here first. Um, we're we're going to go down this way, I suppose. Have Is is that what I've planned, Redmore? Have you got any plans? Yes, I've got plans. I've got loads of plans. Okay. So we're going to go uh, down this way, um, and we're going to learn a little bit about what they are planning for, because they're trying to create an inclusive growth agenda. For it, they got to map out every part of your society, mainly how to rule you, how to make sure you're you're the employee and they're the employer. Uh, keep that dynamic going. That's important. That's what's most important to them. Uh, to us, we're being taught how to work more so they can have more and we can have less. That's it. Okay, so taxation, employment, of course. So they talk straight away taxation. So taxation on employment is the most important thing, of course. So anybody who's um one of those America low tax loving type of guys, well, you can forget about that. Tax is the first thing on the mind of the World Economic Forum of the future. It's not a surprise because it looks like some sort of communist fascist sort of merger or hunk, hulk. Um, jobs, of course employment they got to think about jobs but these are they're talking about different types of jobs you know they want to create jobs that haven't the, the technology hasn't been created to uh have those jobs filled or to do what you need it's like um very esoteric when you think about what they're planning they're planning ahead of ahead of ahead like some form of a, a policy evangelicism um access to education now this this is this is always going to be interesting because they want you to have access to education but just only the right type of education i think we'll learn this later you know they like you having the right type of education but they want you to have a access to education but they've already gerrymandered and manipulated the universities to get, be substandard uh in their ability to uh create uh future pioneers and etc no instead they're creating um uh, workers employees uh serfs for the master class and especially for in the future that will remain even more so um skills in transition learn to code that's what they're, they're talking and up here as they we've seen this in multiple uh, in multiple slides so far aiming right at that retirement aging retirement security you don't have retirement security now do you you're old and we've taken all your money 
So now you're going to have to get back to work. Go on, get on that flying tram and go and learn to code. And that's really what they're talking about. So skills in transition is like, you know, technology changes all the time. That's a nice way of saying a load of things that will happen are going to be really negative for mainly older folk who have put in a lot to the society, especially through taxes and stuff, and are about to have the rug whoop from under them. No retirement, straight back to work. You have to do it to stop the East from destroying the west you know the narratives will prevail or city state a from destroying city state b uh, is much more likely in the future uh, reducing formality dangerous reducing formality means reducing uh some of the laws some of the the ways we do things so um that could also be in a communicatory uh or mean it in a, a way of communication we don't need to say hello anymore we just need to get on with it you know but i think formality is much more oh we've got to sign this and you've got to sign this and we reduce that formality so everything can be done quicker it sounds all right to us until we realize with that a load of our rights and a load of our ability to complain about things going wrong just disappear too you know uh like when you try and contact uber and you can't get food to anybody because because they'll try and put you through to the person who's not answering the phone. Mm. The old way had the best ways. I'm sure that's been there since the dawn of phones. Um, and of course, they're like just sticking on the end of most things. Gender quality. Yeah, just saying. Gender quality. Um, they just like to throw it in quickly. And, and they are very much like that. You know, we know they like to virtue signal, uh, signal uh, quite a lot uh entrepreneurship so this is something that again if you want to get a load of people to learn to code you gotta get a load of people who have a product to code or something that they want to give to the people and underneath this entrepreneurship they say 300 million youth are excluded what does that mean 300 million youth are excluded from work why are they too young maybe are they trying to learn what they do what are you suggesting? And when you say 300 million, are you talking about like between the ages of like 16 to 23? Or are you talking much younger? Um, it's a really, what they want to do is get everybody into surf labor as quickly as possible. If they want to start um, bashing out the things that they see in the future as making corporations money, as electric vehicles, electric this, electric that, um, all of the answers the in a flashy type of snake oil way um to all of your needs and just take them take them take them that's what the future holds um now it's interesting over here uh entrepreneurship after they say 300 million youth excluded they got, they got uh funding resources so they're looking for ways to fund things obviously that's going to be through taxation and they're deciding probably on, on what gets invested in and we've seen how that goes in the past if if these um future models of a society and how to create policy anything like the ones we got now we're not going to go that far because everything like breaks down a little bit and is gets a uh, gets well anyway training uh so there's again learn to code is written all over this if you want to if you want to uh create a new business or new enterprise you need to get into training and retraining over and over again uh now they've 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 spelled nourishing wrong nourishing um unless nourishing is a nourishing is american or something like that maybe context of nourishing so what do you mean the context of nourishing new models of social entrepreneurship like nourishing uh, entrepreneurship um and it, context of it well people want to I, it's so hard to understand what they're trying to say so i can't i can't necessarily give you um any help on on that front but the, already they go on to new models this is very connected new models of social entrepreneurship both political and economical look they've got another all c and i just pointing out there they love a bit of that um so so 
the new models, like uh, uh, maybe they mean like context, the uh, context of encouraging the new models of entre uh, of social entrepreneurship, because there's there's obviously new models, but what we see is it digressing into very simplistic digital models. So they take really complex games, for instance, and they turn them into really simplistic games really easily, and it, it, it you you watch everything you enjoy playing become something you don't enjoy playing because you're tapping on the screen that's all you're doing it's no longer moving around doing loads of stuff moving your hands loads no 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 it's about stopping doing stuff like that soon it'll just be about flicking your eyes around and that will will be a terrible world we're living in i'm pretty positive so new models of social entrepreneurship and they say political and economical you know this is one of the things that they like to do is um split them down the most important lines that they have political and economical not societal you'll notice this constantly throughout you, you you don't need you don't need society to have anything for itself you just need politically economical and everybody can get forced and manipulated to do whatever they want eventually and lower entry level well there you go there you go that that whole um access to education aging retirement skills in transition 300 million youth are included lower end so those 300 million youth who are excluded is that because lower entry level lower entry level for so you don't need so many skills you haven't been trained so much is it low entry level that you're younger so you can go into work when you're 15 or 14 um legally uh may increase inequality maybe it sounds like it's a lower entry level it's, it's this question mark there is a definite question mark loads of question mark there and uh we'll go across to institutions here so uh within section of institutions we got uh domestic utilization so uh, domestic does this mean countries as we've seen with the mega cities will it be a city or will it be a state or will it end up being a nation in a sense uh if it grows so big so domestic utilization of what they want i'm not sure what that you know what they'll need but what they'll need is to share everything me bets with the rest of the world in a community where everybody gets well nothing the rich people get everything and you get to fly to work so that we can we rich people can have good stuff um so there's a national framework for institutions is of course of course, they want to be able to combine everything into national frameworks. That's how communism looks. That's how fascism looks. You know, this they're looking for national frameworks. Yeah, yeah. So you can control everything. But then at global scale, you're implementing national frameworks. You're actually into implementing global frameworks, aren't you, uh, for institutions? And I think that's already in existence um, all, all around the place as well, uh, international cooperation of institutions is uh coalescing into being a bigger beast eventually uh participation in global and environmental inst issues yeah institutions like to get uh participating in these things now up here um employment the, between the participating growth in different ways and this other all-seeing eye here that they like to throw in they've also got some stuff they've got uh employment imbalance of income uh equality issues education preparing people to move into complex issues learn to code uh redevelopment models in latin america i'm in latin america the redevelopment models is that they tell you what to do and you do it um and they 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 mess around with your political system as much as they can and try and get you to rewrite your constitution that's what they uh that's what they like down in latin america constant change that goes in their favor if they win eventually and they just got to keep doing it over and over again eventually they'll get more until people say all right then all right what for god's sake so there's an imbalance in income and uh employment equality issues oh this is all true there are problems in all these different things but what they're looking to do is create this uh new inclusive world and that's in their image and at the end of this pc it says looking at long-term and short-term impacts and enablers now that I, again, that's the second 
uh, Olsi and I that they would like to put on there. And I think they're just messing with conspiracy theories, to be perfectly honest. But look, there's some sort of witty wordy hypnotic laser going into the center of the eye. <laughs> so, I mean, they must be messing with people. Uh, looking at a long-term and short-term impact and enablers. Well, yes, um, they, they've been constantly finding who to work with for a long time. So up here, you've got three more for this slide, and then we get onto a really important slide, really important. So uh, development, gender split into, of course, male and female for most people, but then a load of other people are like, I'm a transgender fluid unicorn, and then you've got a lot of divide and conquer. So they want development in the areas of gender, development in the areas of governance. When they say development, they mean development in their direction, not in your direction. There's no say over that. This is the whole point. They're giving you your rules here. They're, they're the ones uh, who get to implement it. They're the ones who's in control. Uh, so development on the environment, well, they, again, in their way, because to for, to make Bill um, Gates' dreams come true, you've got to use basically every resource you can find around the place to create all of this electric cars and this infrastructure. So you're letting them mine, and you're just giving consent to the bad people again. That's what they're doing. They're giving you a way to go, look, you're going to have to do this in the future, Give us your consent again. And then they got your consent again. Then you're in. Uh, it Do something about inequality. Well, I, I mean, they just, they, there's more inequality. It's just by sparse amount. Everybody, um, the majority of people on earth will be more equal because they will be more poor. That's it. They will be more equal because they will be more poor. And, and on the side, it's got access to finance, public good, whatever that means, access to public good. Can I have access to... Everybody wants access to public good. What's that? What does that mean? Access to finance, public good, finance. So they put that in tri twice in a show in progression over time. So they want this uh, development that shows progression over time. And uh, they're going to do it by talking about gender inequality in the environment. Um, and I think what that is, is ways, and the only other thing is governance. That's ways to talk about issues that uh, are on should be on the sideline compared to governance at the moment, where governance is really, really important. Instead, we're talking about stuff which, well, we're all pretty poor right now. Black, white is going to get to the point where we're all about the same unequal from those guys up above and those guys are giving you this they're making us look at each other they're making us divide against each other and at the same time uh they're they're doing the old environment woo woo at you and, and distracting you uh health and education is one of the next ones uh, quality and relevant education. Now, qual quality of and relevance of education is very interesting because, of course, I, I may have mentioned in this already and I've mentioned before in other uh, videos that um, on the second Schwab piece, the second in the series, um, I, I talk about Herman Kahn and how Herman Kahn and the Hudson Institute worked for the State Department, advising the State Department uh, in, in the late 60s and how they um, suggested very openly in this ancillary document that they created for the defense, uh, the, the State Department, that uh, people should be educated to a certain level and the special select leadership group be separated elsewhere, uh, educated elsewhere. And we see that anyway in society. And the, the level of schooling in the most of the world keeps going down and down and down and down and down. The quality and relevant education. Yeah, they want you to have a relevant, unqualified education, qualified enough that you'll do what they tell you to do. And uh, I don't know if anybody's experienced this in their own life. I think they have. But they go through school and they end up doing whatever the last basic thing that they studied was and they chose was, um, not necessarily something that they would then go on to do for the rest of their life. They, you People usually switch between trades because they're like, oh, I wasn't really taught anything in school. Because you're not taught anything. You're taught to be stupid. Um, so continuous education learn to code it's written all over it inclusive agenda learn to code learn to code you haven't learned to code why haven't you learned to code yet 
go on and learn to code. That's really the the three things uh, that you got to remember. Continuous education. This is also for the retirees because those retirees are no longer retired. They're back into work. You got to keep being trained. So you got to learn how to use all of this stuff that they they are force fed. Um, they've got to learn how to live in these mega cities, uh, and they got to learn to look after themselves because no nurses are going to want to look after them because it's all going to be private afterwards. So that's nice. Um, so what you're going to do? Well, I suppose you're going to have to continue have continuous education so people can learn to code. Uh, disaggregation of data for healthcare and education. The the uh, disaggregation of data. That's interesting because I think that says basically data starts to become a shared entity. It's no longer goes through. Uh, um certain people to make sure that it's correct that 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 person gets access to your data instead it's just out there the aggregators being disaggregated no longer exists that means you no longer have an aggregator do you so i would assume that that means that disaggregation of data means that people can have much more access to your data so you'll no longer have uh, as well sections of your data so uh, your legal record and your health record will be available on the same platform like uh palantir's platform maybe which is uh still um the top contender uh peter teal's uh, software is still the top contender to to uh be the global data source for everything where all of your data uh is kept on and they love using this they love using it because it's uh it's control that's control right there so results look down there money and budgets lead to results yes money and budgets lead to results so basically they gotta pay for all of the results if they want results and that's the best way to get results paying that's inclusive growth agenda if you don't have money you're not going to be able to pay to get results well done go go learn to code hurry up um so appropriated and sustainable is written underneath appropriated and sustainable so appropriation when you take something and sustainable well uh i i i think i think that sounds like um the the type of double speak and what i think it means won't be what they 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 say it means um but will probably be closer to what it actually is um i think that they will just be able to say okay this we're not using that area those cities of the past they're gone so let's start taking from there um instead of uh going from quarries and stuff but what they'll do be doing is sifting up as much of the valuable stuff as they can so that they make money from it and no one else can get a, um, a grasp on it and that'll be put into law uh make it sustainable well we'll all be in bugs in their world so there you go diversity and inclusiveness recognition of diversity look i'm black and he's white look we both have an equal say in this company and there's exactly 50 percent black and 50 percent white what about the chinese people okay now we'll put in some chinese people too because you've complained but the recognition of diversity is that the, you look around and you see the diversity but a lot of places experience that they have like um uh one percent asian community and and the asian people have all of the places in in the company you know that's that's a obviously exaggeration but this is something that people see that diversity and inclusive the recognition of diversity means you end up with more diversity than is actually there and that annoys the culture who are dominant at the time and that causes conflict which causes usually uh problems culturally and societally um so promote change and participation in decision making process they can promote change all they like um but the participation in decision making processes you're going to be like oh yes i have had a vote i am one of millions but the person who's decided are well up the top and you've had no real vote they're going to make you believe you've got uh, a stake and your you use your um uh, uh, own vote within decision making processes and you don't the people have decided it's either this way or that way which way should we do it let's put it to a vote but you don't get to be the people at the start who decide what the options are so you're not you've not got much of a vote 
And this is this slide. This is good because this was the harder of the two. Um, and look, they're growing. They're growing as look at small, it's a small flourishing little seedling. And look, this massive oversized leaf says, our next journey and partnership. They're growing their next journey and partnership. And this is the inclusive growth agenda. So you can see we've seen parts of this. And some of this seems completely normal. A couple of all seeing eyes around the place. Split up the black and white people. Make them fight amongst themselves. That old chestnut. You know, this is all pretty normal. The next slide is um, a lot more uh, dystopian, you could say. It's called The Power of Persuasion. And it is pretty uh, heavy. So let's have a look at this. Because this is the last slide. Slide 10 of this uh, four-part series. And first of all, we see vision. <laughs> we see an empty book when you said vision. Because people need to write in that empty book their vision, don't they? Choosing a co Choose a compelling narrative. All through this slide, you will notice the lack of them choosing truth and honesty as a compelling narrative. And I, lots of people believe that truth and honesty is the only narrative that is compelling. And that problem we have in our society is everywhere. This is everywhere. Choose a compelling narrative. They choose a narrative that will compel you, but the narrative is not true. Loads of people will say then, Oh no, but the, the means suited the ends. We I mean we got something good out of it in the end. But I mean, really, you keep knocking away a truth and honesty and you get weird. You live in a weird culture all of a sudden. We're there, we're in the weird, uh, weird culture. Choose a compelling narrative. That's how they just start. That's how they start this off with. They want to choose a compelling narrative. Oh, how to persuade. Look, this arrow goes directly into the brain. How to persuade. How to persuade. How to tell the truth. How to be honest. No, how to persuade. Now, do you, you, you only need to persuade if someone doesn't feel like it's true or it's real. That's when you need to persuade. And that's what they're looking at. That's the moment when they need to persuade. And that's what they're saying straight away. How to persuade. Um, easy, concrete examples. You know, that is understandable. If we want to um, explain anything to anybody, you need easy, concrete examples. Not necessarily will those easy, concrete examples be true. Those examples can be cherry-picked, of course, as we will see later on. Um, there's a, a methods to that, but there's also uh, strategies and uh, ways to do these things. Uh, clear success metrics. So to to understand what the people want, what they consider success, or what success looks like um, internally and externally, maybe in business or in government or just an individual self, um, what success looks like and how to measure it. Uh, then you can decide how you can manipulate the measurement of that as much as possible. Because that's what we see them do all the time. They create the metrics and then they say they force feed you garbage that looks metrically satisfying. But it's not true, is it? Um, examples you can share. Well, examples, a lot of people will be persuaded with the power of persuasion to share um, examples that they think back up their argument and not share ones that don't back up their argument. We all know this. We all know this. But you've got to be honest. Honest and truth and trust. Is that what we're aiming for? <laughs> don't think so. A clear plan. Well, yeah, you need a clear plan, don't you? They need a clear plan. That's why they're mapping out now. They're training up their people. They're brainstorming it. And they're going to come back with a clear plan. And we are going to be left behind if we don't have a clear response to their plan. And we can't see their plan coming, which is what they really go by nowadays. So create a sense of urgency. This is really important. You have to create a sense of urgency. And we hear this and we think, oh, marketing words. But create a sense of urgency. That means to manipulate people into believing that they have to do something now or else 
Just like Brexit, they created a sense of urgency. Just like coronavirus created a sense of urgency. Just like Ukraine law, create, uh, Ukraine Russia war, uh, create a sense of urgency. They are creating a sense of urgency, but is that sense of urgency true? Is it honest? You'll find nearly every time that they create a sense of urgency, that they persuade, they use metrics, they share examples that it is not true. It is not true. What they're trying to get you to believe is not true. It's just there to distract you. What you want to hear is more important than what I want to say. Think about that. It's very cleverly worded, but what you want to hear so what do you, if we tell you what you want to hear it's more important than what i want to say so if i want to say something but you won't listen to it then i should tell you something else so you'll hear me then you'll trust my voice and you'll let my voice in the second time that's how you manipulate people that's how you lie to people that's how you deceive people that's what these people are going for that's exactly what these people are going for these guys are all about persuasion and deception what you want to hear is more important than what I want to say. Straight away down here as well, you got. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go uh, uh, down a bit, in a bit. But you, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna wait for that because honestly, it's it's pretty horrific. Um, we are natural storytellers. Listening, we are natural. We sit around a campfire and we tell stories. We tell stories to give people moral, moral and ethical backbone of some kind, uh, an education on what you will feel like if something happens here or something happens there. But doesn't mean that the stories are true. Now, back around the fire that they're alluding to with this image, uh, back around the fire when these people would be sitting around and they would be talking about uh, stories, would they believe them to be accurate and true? Or would they believe them to be uh, metaphorical? Now, it's really hard to believe um, from what we're given as the idea of the people in the past that they would understand that they were anything but true. But in actual fact, most people probably saw all stories as metaphorical and we should do today when the story is given to us with no evidence. But we are natural storytellers, it's true. Okay. It's uh, a <laughs> emotion pass and puppets on the string. So let's go up here first. Now, this is really interesting. They say straight away, right? Um, you know, they say, down here, tell a story. And you think about uh, telling a, a story, tell a story in a headline. Think about that. And they've got this uh, mock-up of the New York Times over there. So who's telling the story? Government telling the story in the headline? Is business telling the story in the headline? So they got control of the headlines? Is that what you're suggesting? Or is you just saying, when you try telling a story in a headline, when you try using just a headline, go on, sit around and, and write examples of how you would tell an entire story in a headline. President dead, shot in the head. And you told a story, did you? Did you just say just one thing that, or two things that happened? The president went to square, shot in head, man arrested. You got a bit of a, a story there. But still, they, they, they will be in control of the headlines. Um, they will be in control of all of those things. Um, so... Here, down here, interesting, they used the Twitter logo. They used a little tweeting bird uh, in this part of their uh, presentation. Interesting because some of the WEF-related um, businesses have, of course, attempted a minor boycott of Twitter, uh, half-hearted as it is, uh, to say, oh, oh, you, you, Elon Musk took over, we've got to do this. Um, he, we're creating a narrative that he's on one side and we're on the other side. And yet we say basically the same thing all of the time. So you've got the tweeting bird here and it says focus, and that's focusing on a certain area, focusing on um, a correct way and uh, communicate with people. 
uh, which is of course obviously important. Um, as you saw with with the the maybe telling a story through a headline, um, yeah, brevity, so concise, exact use of words um, is important because they like to be concise because then they can convince you it's one thing, but their concision is incised your uh yourself <laughs> no and they are able to um trick you into signing stuff and agreeing to stuff that can be worded in a way that sounds good but then isn't so beneficial once enacted again metrics is in there so understanding how many people are liking or disliking what you you want how many people are involved other things that's massively important to see how to lead people and community there you go um using a community um to get your your to persuade people is massively important so nearly every community that gets built up that's honest becomes corrupt in no time whatsoever why because these guys are in control these guys are the ones who have taken and co-opted loads of different communities so that they can use them as marketing campaigns marketing use them for marketing that's it up here now this is where i find it gets really interesting all of this gets really interesting when you get to the powers of persuasion and this this very i, I mean you've seen all of the other except for maybe there's like out of it there's probably four fairly relatively small slides and six really big slides but the really big sides, if you're talking about the power of persuasion, they've got loads of tools for this. And look how empty it is. They put trust and truth up here. Now they put trust within brevity because that might be linked, you know, concise and exact use of words linked to trust, but isn't truth, isn't linked to truth. Truth is up here all alone with nothing underneath it. Truth just sits there alone. In the world economic forum charts interesting that there's nothing really underneath it trust use evidence and examples order your arguments so that's what they want you to do they want you to order your arguments use evidence and examples yes but are those examples is that evidence carefully selected evidence are the examples carefully chosen examples order your arguments but eventually your arguments will be um uh, challenged so under power uh, uh, legitimacy you've got authority and facilitation so um what can you do what can you do and facilitation you know um what can you get done uh it makes you legitimate in this world which makes sense to an extent that's always been the way what can you get done and what can you do um those are the things that really make you top notch or not especially women history prepare they say prepare but they're losing words they haven't got words they've got even some things that don't have anything there they've not put them in there why not mm, they're too hard it's too hard for what they're trying to explain eventually they've just got to be honest you'll see what their honesty looks like people centric sorry people centric know your audience yeah so your powers of persuasion and your preparation your uh listening all of it has got to lead to knowing your audience there's experts there's general and then anticipate the counter argument so know your expert audience know your general audience and anticipate the counter arguments that's all well and good but let's get to it here we go the last part of this bursting the davos bubble and it should say a lot about what they're training people emotion and passion is there and all of this other stuff and what are the one thing they want from it all empathy this this one part here i think is really massively important to understanding who they are manipulation and they want to talk about this just in their training slides just having a conversation about empathy and manipulation there is a science to manipulation so they train their people that there's a good science to manipulation and there are techniques 
Facts don't matter. And you've got the little puppet on the string over there. Just above, we are storytellers. What you want to hear is more important than what you want to say. True emotion and passion with just a heart. Truth all on its own up here. Vision, create a compelling narrative, not choose a compelling narrative. All of it leads to manipulation. In fact, all 10 slides in this series lead to manipulation. And as they say, they're correct as well. There is a science. And to the science of manipulation means that when people enact that science, when people conspire, that's what they're doing. They create a conspiracy. That's it, conspiracy fact. They're manipulating things, a bunch of people together. They're conspiring to do something. And they'll use the science of manipulation to do it. It's a real thing, a thing they talk about too. And there are techniques, yes, there are techniques to manipulate people. And that's what they do. They manipulate people all over. All of the rest of this is really to get down to that. All of the rest of this is to really get uh, down to the fact that you're going to use all of these different tools and you're going to manipulate your guys. What's the last slide? The power of persuasion. I'm, um, I find it very obvious that these guys want to manipulate you and want to manipulate me. Of course they do. They gain out of it. They get to change society around us and make sure that they're still the super rich. They're the elite living on the top. And we are always underneath. We are always unable to rise above it because the rules have been set in stone by the last generation who had their interests in mind and the interests of their families and their extended friendship group, but not the interests of the majority of the people. The thing is, when you're a top elite member of family and you only care about your family and your extended friendship groups, is that there's a load of those extended, extended friendship groups that all shared. They're all the same people. So they, those people are going to benefit in all so many ways, but the majority of the world will not benefit at all. They will be manipulated. And there's a science to manipulation, and these guys accept there's a science to manipulation. If we say that, and we say out loud, you're being manipulated, and they do it in a scientific and systematic way, you get called all sorts of names. But they're conspiring behind the scenes to do exactly this. They're training their people in uh, everything from um, how to build this horrible dystopian mega city world that they want to create next, but more importantly, how to uh, manipulate people's minds into doing things that um, they would not do themselves, that would only suit uh, an agenda of the rich elites of the business um, of government, but not of the people. And the people are the, supposedly the most important. Instead, we've got to take deprive them of education, and we do that by creating inclusivity. We take away the educational standards, make them work for longer uh, and from a younger age. Do you see how this goes? They're going to make you work for longer. They're going to make you work when you're younger. You won't have a retirement. You will be forced to retrain in something new. The world needs you, so you have to work for this corporation. You're being given the same options as the last generation and generation before and the generation before who all decided to walk this path and just continue on doing exactly what they're doing. There is a new world that they're creating, and you have no say in it. And they will tell you that you will have a chance to use your voice, but you will have a chance to use your voice and scream into the darkness and hear nothing in return. You will have no stake within a world of stakeholder capitalism. Nothing. Whatever you think you will get from this, and this is, goes for the top 3%, you will just get strife. Most of what they want to do will not work, and most of the people responsible will be dead by the time it starts not working really badly and affecting people's lives really badly.
They are an old generation. People who are in their 80s and 90s, a lot of these people, they want to live as long as possible. And they don't take those vaccines. They don't um, li- They don't want to live in the mega cities. They don't uh, go to the supermarket and shop. They don't walk in the local park. These guys are above us all. They're going to continue being above us until we realize that their game is manipulation. They're snake oil salesmen. They're rip-off mar- artists, con merchants. And they're going around industrializing the con. And a lot of us take it because we got no other options. What are you going to watch on TV? Britain's Got Talent or I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. What are you going to, what are you going to see uh, on the, what, what new channel are you going to watch? CNN or Fox or BBC? At the end of the day, they're all reporting basically the things that you sh- don't need to report, but they're reporting all of the other stuff that you need to report is being hidden away. And there is conspiracies galore all around. Lots of them. Um, and the World Economic Forum slides that uh, uh, have been presented here in this series are uh, all really important to take in and understand to know what they're planning and how they're planning on getting away with it. And what I think, when I look to them and 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 being uh, like focusing in on sections and and researching different things, including words, you know, uh, within this series, I've come across a few words where I wasn't sure what they actually meant. Um, I thought I did, but looking at the actual definitions of what they mean, they're going to. Uh, turn our world into a policy jail cell. They're going to use uh, very uh, carefully chosen, they're going to use brevity, uh, they're, they're going to carefully chosen words um, to lock us in to a world that we can't leave and we've apparently agreed to, yet we've only had like one little vote here or one little vote there. And this future world is all-encompassing you uh it will affect you and it will affect all of your loved ones really negatively i hope that people have learned something from this series it's quite a a a difficult one to to sell to most people you want to do some uh training slides might you know that type of thing isn't something that's easy to advertise it's either going to be for you or against you you're either going to like it or not and I hope you've enjoyed or at least taken something from it. Um, if anything, this is a resource for other people in the future who are going to have to fight things like the entities like the World Economic Forum. They got to fight those those people. They're, 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 there is going to be a point when they reach peak, um, uh, their peak, and they're gonna they're gonna start to crumble. And we have to have people who. Don't let it form into something new. Don't let them just run into a new shadow. But get these shadowy people out into the light, expose them for what they are, and see if we can evolve a bit like to stop these people being in charge of everything and deciding all of what our future looks like when their idea of what our future looks like looks like Henry Kissinger's wet nightmare. My name's Johnny Vedmore. You can find my work on johnnyvedmore.com, fungimonkey.com. I write on unlimitedhangout.com and UK Column News. So um, please enjoy uh, my work if you can. Support me. Other than that, I'll leave you with a thought of uh, manipulation. And how you're being manipulated. Because you are. We all are. I'm Johnny Vedmore, Fungi Monkey. Goodbye. The young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, certainly penetrates the cabinets.